because I studied chemistry and oceanography as my degree and uh, I had in mind going and working in the tropics on the back of a boat in a bikini and you know doing all the glamorous kind of science and then a job came up at the British Antarctic Survey and I thought well you know that kind of looks quite interesting and, and I'll be honest I hadn't really thought too much about going to the polar regions before that and then as soon as I started I kind of got into the you know the work that um, the British Antarctic Survey do and then I got into the to Antarctica and you can't help but being surrounded by 400 people who live, breathe and um, sleep Antarctica to not get inspired by it. Um, and so then I was quite lucky really that after about my first year at um, BAS I was asked to go and join a field party um, and I went down to a place called Burtner Island um, which is close to 80 degrees south um, and it was part of an international drilling team. It was part of a French and British drilling team. Yeah, I used to study um, ice cores from Greenland, uh, studying big glacial changes in the, uh, the climate in the past. Um, and from that, I've then changed to climate of the last sort of 150 years, but still using ice cores. And so in January of this year, I went down to uh, the Antarctic Peninsula and I drilled my very own ice core. Um, which is 130 metres and it takes us back to 1850 and from that we're looking at changes in atmospheric circulation because we know that the Antarctic Peninsula has been warming faster than anywhere else in the world. We only have the observational records from stations um, back sort of the last not even 50 years so this is to extend beyond that and see when this recent warming that we're seeing now when it started what um, associated circulation changes went with that. From the very first iceberg that you see out the window, you know, tiny window, you're sort of craning to see it, you know, that, that's it, it's quite an overwhelming experience, not anything you can get from going anywhere else in the world. Kind of don't realise quite how amazing it is until you get back and you start talking to people about it and just the kind of everyday thing that you get used to, you know, spending three months in a tent, hundreds and hundreds of miles away from anybody is just quite amazing. And, you know, eating, eating out of um, freeze-dried packets, having no toilet and no, you know, no running water, everything that you want, even just to go and, you know, you're cold, you want to go and make a cup of tea, it, it's, it's, you've got to go and dig your snow, you've got to put your stove on, you've got to, you know, it's a long job just doing that.